Our next guest, Rachel Gretscher, uh, research fellow in economics, budget and entitlements at the conservative think tank, wow. the Heritage Foundation, joining us live from Washington, D.C. Rachel, pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for joining us today. Um, give us a sense of what your view is now on where the tax reform process is at and whether we're likely to get anything tabled before Christmas. Well, I think we are likely to see something passed before Christmas. We heard just today, this afternoon, the Republican conference has reached a deal. They haven't released all of the details of that yet because they're waiting to meet with President Trump. But we do know some of the top line details there. And so we've heard that the individual rate will go down to 37 percent. The corporate rate had been 20 percent in both the House bill and the Senate bill, but that now is looking like it will be 21 percent, but will go into effect immediately in 2018. And then there's also a change in the pass-through rate. So the pass-through rate is the individual rate, but this compromise bill would allow a 20 percent deduction. So that takes the top marginal rate for pass-throughs down below 30 percent. So those are the big changes that we've heard of here, and we've heard that they will be voting early next week in the Senate, followed by the House, to hopefully get this passed very soon. Uh, Rachel, uh, can you clarify this for me? There is no guarantee that those uh, changes pro pro proposed by the GOP are going to be part of the final bill. Is that right? Because it still has to go through this uh, reconciliation process. That's true, but the fact that the conference has reached this agreement signals that these are the changes that they have enough votes to secure in both the House and the Senate. And so it is likely that what we see coming out of the conference after they've met with the president and had his sign off will be very close to what the final bill will be. Do you think, do, do you see this as a positive, uh, Rachel? How, how do you vo vo view the impact rather? Um, for the U.S. economy moving forward, mm -hmm. is it going to cause higher interest rates and uh, therefore wipe out any positive effects to growth or do you think that it will actually um, bring longer term benefits to the U.S. economy? No, I think this will be a big net positive for the economy. It's not everything that conservatives had hoped for in terms of a really pro-growth tax bill, but particularly on the corporate side and the small business side, this has great positive impacts there. And so the result of reducing our top corporate rate from 35% to 20% and also shifting to territorial system, that will have huge impacts across the economy. You know, that's going to make us more competitive in America. And not only are there tax cuts for individuals and families, but they're also going to see the benefit of those corporate tax cuts through higher wages, um, through higher returns on their investment, and potentially lower prices from those corporations. So I think this uh, is a big win. We've estimated up to 3% growth right, coming so from 3%, this tax proposal. 3% growth on a sustained basis, which means, Rachel, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that this will be self-funding. Within the 10-year budget window, it's not self-funding. It's not as big of a deficit increase as this um, non-dynamic scores show. But in the out years, yes, if you use that 3% growth or upwards, which some economists have seen, then you will have this be in self-funding. Okay, something to watch. Uh, we're very close to Christmas now, so we'll be keeping a close eye on it. Rachel, thanks so much for talking to, my to Shri and myself here on Squawk Box.